Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. strong hint that Antiguans could be going to an early poll. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, February 21st. From the CMC News Centre in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown has hinted that a date for general elections will be announced in the coming days. During a visit to the Antigua State College on Tuesday, he indicated that Wednesday's meeting of Cabinet could be the last before the election is called. Responding to members of the college staff who asked him to take an issue to the next meeting of the Cabinet, Brown said he could not guarantee the matter would be addressed then. The Prime Minister's comments also came ahead of an event scheduled for this weekend to kick off the campaign of the ruling Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party. We get more in this ABS TV report. The election is constitutionally due in 2019, but under the Westminster system of government, it is the Prime Minister's prerogative to name the date within that five-year period. The head of government teased the election date as he interacted with students and faculty at the Antigua State College on Tuesday. You know the election is coming like a thief in the night, right? Mm -hmm. So just in case the elections come this weekend, then you may have to give us a few more weeks. A poll conducted in early February by the regionally respected cadres shows the ruling ABLP with a commanding advantage over its nearest rival, the UPP. The poll by Peter Wickham's outfit shows that the ABLP has support of 36% of respondents to the 24% for the UPP, with 5% support for the DNA. Cadres also carried out trend analysis on the roughly 35% of people polled who were either not sure or who would not say how they would vote. That analysis shows the ABLP getting an even bigger advantage over the UPP, a margin of 55% to 38%. The poll concluded that if an election were to be held now, the UPP would have difficulty in retaining the three seats it won in 2014. Critically, the pollster says it is the UPP which has been more adversely affected by the emergence of the DNA as it has hemorrhaged support. The Trinidad and Tobago government is taking both civil and criminal legal action against the owners of a vessel responsible for an oil spill in Chagaramas in October last year. But Energy Minister Franklin Kahn, who made the disclosure, said that based on legal advice, he would withhold the name of the vessel and its owners for now. Samples of oil had been taken from vessels that were docked in Chagaramas at the time of the spill on October 15, 2017, and authorities were able to narrow down one vessel with an identical match to the oil found in the water. The spill cost the state $2 million TT in cleanup operations. In the Bahamas, health officials will recommend to Cabinet that a sin tax be introduced to pay for the country's national health insurance. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands made the disclosure as he said the national health insurance cannot succeed unless Bahamians make sacrifices to support it. He says the idea is still in the early stages, but if approved, the tax would affect items like alcohol, cigarettes and foods high in corn syrup. If you pull up and you got a $5 bill, I see no reason why we can't add 50 cents or 75 cents to that bill that goes directly to funding NHI, that goes directly to paying for some of these expensive services. The argument could be made that the people who consume these types of food tend to be the less wealthy among us. And so what we need to do is to make sure that, you know, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? That, that we don't put even more trouble on the backs of the people who are making it uh, with great difficulty right now. 
Jamaica's Education Minister Ruel Reed says a high school student recently threat, that says recent threat of mass killing is a wake-up call for all educational institutions to activate their safety and security plans. The student of the Wilmers Boys School was detained by police and questioned on Monday after releasing a voice note suggesting he would carry out a shooting. The teen was released into the custody of his parents after lawmen determined that he did not have the capacity to execute the threat. Although saying that schools are generally prepared for any eventuality, the education minister said they must be on their guard. We look at the high levels of crime and violence in our country. Um, it is not unthinkable that we have youngsters who are in distress for, 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 for several reasons. And, uh, you know, I've already indicated to my team long before this happened that we have to create a very robust system of response to these kind of um, emerging situations. And the JTA has raised it with us uh, uh, already. Um, ACP Minto mentioned yesterday about our plan to roll out um, you know, time out facilities and so on, strengthening our social uh, service network, uh, more social workers, strengthening and guidance um, uh, counseling unit. Still in Kingston, there are renewed calls for more investments in early childhood development. This, as experts say, there's a partial link between the country's crime woes and poor attendance at basic school level. We get more in this TVJ News report. There are over 1,800 recognized basic schools in Jamaica. Some are being operated in communities plagued by crime and violence. This has resulted in low attendance as parents try to keep their children safe from barking guns and criminals on the loose. Some of these criminals are under the age of 18. Police reports have indicated 58 teens were arrested and charged with murder last year. 78 were arrested for shooting. 100 and 48 arrested for illegal possession of firearm and 63 for robbery with aggravation. As for the young students, the children who live in those areas go to school with high levels of stress. Stress is damaging to the developing brain. Stress is damaging to the developing brain before the child is born. A pregnant woman who sees and is bothered by violence or experiences violence is already passing on hormones into her baby that's already damaging the brain. Babies of mothers who grow up in stress, in, in areas of high stress, the babies are more irritable at birth, after birth. They, they're more difficult to calm and they begin to have problems from that early. Despite the challenges, Professor Samsvon has stressed the need for parents to not only ensure children are enrolled in early childhood institutions, but that they attend school. She pointed to a Perry preschool study, which revealed, among other things, that adults who underwent a quality preschool program rarely got in trouble with the law. The studies are very clear that children who were in a high-quality early childhood program had fewer arrests, fewer prosecutions and fewer um, in incarcerations. Oh, it's, uh, it's a landmark study, the Perry Preschool study, and most people don't realize that that was the greatest impact, was in reduction in crime. Which is why she's making a case for more investment in early childhood education. The faster we move early childhood ahead, it's the faster our national development is going to move ahead. So this is why many countries have moved their funding, moved more funding to early childhood than in the later years because you get much more returns from investment. And the returns from investment are not only in education, you know. The single greatest impact of early childhood investment is reduction in crime, not improvement in education. Clearly both of those are, are somewhat linked, but when the economic analysis was done, the greatest impact was crime reduction. Venezuela has become the first country to launch its own cryptocurrency, the Petro. President Nicolas Maduro made the announcement on Tuesday, saying that the digital currency would help Venezuela advance in issues of monetary sovereignty to make financial transactions and overcome the U.S. financial blockade. He said the country has taken a giant step into the 21st century and is on the world's technological vanguard. But opposition leaders are skeptical about the digital currency, saying that it needs congressional approval. The U.S 
government has issued economic sanctions against Venezuela and that has been making it difficult for the country and companies in Venezuela to transact international business using the U.S. dollar. They say the currency has no credibility and that is the opposition saying the credibility has no currency and they see no future in it. Maduro announced that the Petro, which goes public next month and is, be is being backed by the country's crude oil reserves, which are the largest in the world. And ahead in Caribbean Newsland, Oxfam apologizes for the sexual misconduct of some of its staff in Haiti. The details of that story and more after the break. Stay with us. Come, sail with us through our ocean blues, where there's a blessed land that's waiting for you. Look, look, listen, listen, feel, feel, realize your dream escape that's magically surreal. The best kept secret, a place you'll never forget, where adventure beckons with every gentle footstep. From lush mountain green to warm volcanic sand, submerged in splendor, our 32 enchanting islands. A kaleidoscope of experiences, no need to look anymore. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Is there any time that bleaching, over the counter bleaching, is indicated? And if so, when? For minor discolorations, for example, the blemishes that result from acne, um, sometimes certain rashes like eczema, certain burn injuries, for example, a woman who may be curling her hair with a curling iron, she's a little careless, and maybe it falls on the side of her face or on her neck. Very often, for African-American skin, it will leave a discoloration, a dark discoloration. British charity Oxfam has apologized to the government of Haiti for the sexual misconduct of some of its staff during a mission following the devastating earthquake of 2010. Oxfam's regional director Simon Tehurst says that apology was communicated to Haiti's Minister of Planning and External Cooperation, Avior Florent, at a meeting on Monday. Florent, meantime, said his government is investigating a possible cover-up. Earlier this month, reports surfaced that Oxfam employees paid sex workers while on an aid mission to the French-speaking Caricom nation. Oxfam says seven employees have left the organization based on an international probe carried out in 2011. It was also revealed that four members of staff were fired and three others were allowed to resign over the allegations. Cuba will soon have its own pneumonia and bacterial meningitis vaccines. Clinical trials are wrapping up in that Spanish-speaking Caribbean country with the hope that the vaccine will be ready for the local and regional market in 2019. We get more in this special report from Richards Richards of Carnal Carib TV in Cuba. The news now that the clinical trial that will allow a large-scale production of a conjugate vaccine against seven serotypes of pneumococcus has concluded in the Cuban province of Cienfuegos. The mere fact of being able to tell Caribbean families that a new effective and safe Cuban pneumococcal vaccine will soon be available is something very reassuring. This vaccine candidate includes seven serotypes in a single vaccine. This singularity has made preclinical and clinical demonstrations more complex since 2006. Although there are two commercially available vaccines of this type in the world, their prices are restrictive for many countries in our region. 
Each child must be immunized with at least three doses according to what is scientifically proven today. Each dose at the pharmacy price is around $50 and an excessively high amount of money would have to be spent. Therefore, Cuba had to devise a development strategy for its own candidate in order to protect our children against pneumonia and bacterial meningitis. The Finlay Cuban Institute has done just that under the trademark of Kimivio. This heptavalent vaccine will reach all Cuban provinces by next year. Clinical trials have concluded in adults and children under one to five years old. More than 5,000 Cuban children have already been vaccinated, which has shown that the product is safe with no serious side effects apart from those related to any vaccination, redness in the arm, and a low-grade fever. For a vaccine to be introduced in the market, not only must the clinical demonstration stage be overcome, but also it is necessary to have the productive capacities ready, and this last issue will not be available in Cuba until 2090. Now to news from our partners over at France Caribe Broadcast. A new program is being developed to foster trade between Martinique and Eastern Caribbean countries. Trade Enhancement for Eastern Caribbean, that's TICA, is a partnership involving the Martinique government, the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, the Caribbean Export Agency, and the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Martinique. The program will allow small companies in the French-speaking nation to export to the wider Caribbean. It would also allow other Caribbean countries to partner with companies in Martinique to respond to calls for tenders in the region. Businesses will be able to submit their applications to join the program at the end of this month. 30 companies will be selected. The Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Martinique and its partners hope to increase trade by 2% within two years. We get more in this special report. Organization of Eastern Caribbean States in the person of its Director General Didodicus Jules and Caribbean Export Agency of CARA Forum represented by Allison Francis have been present for the signing of this agreement important for the regional trade. In the Caribbean the share of regional trade represents today only 8% of the foreign trade between the 15 or so countries of the zone, a boon for many business leaders in the food industry or the textile industry which intends to conquer this new market like this fashion designer. We are 400,000 on Martinique, but when we look at the statistics, there are in fact only 60,000 people who have a purchasing power to be interested in our products. That's a problematic. And the second is that we are invaded by imported products. So, for the Caribbean creators, it's not necessarily obvious to make our place and to impose our products. In St. Lucia, for example, the population appreciates a lot of everything that is handmade, and creators impose their marks. To decompartmentalize this new market, we must take into account certain specificities because all the countries in the zone do not have the same economic, legal, and regulatory policies in terms of sales and circulation of products. Products, disparities that we'll have to solve. There will be the both individual and collective supports, and the objective is that at the end of these two years, companies know the market is better, since one of the breaks today is the ignorance of the neighboring markets. We will also have work on financing, because there is a problem of the Caribbean financing to determine the finalization tools that will be shared. And finally, increase the relation between the companies that export. We will create with this project TICA, a community of Martinican and Caribbean exporters. We thank our partners at France Caribbean Broadcast for that special report. And ahead in Newsland Sport, Kent Cricket Club chasing 264 to beat Barbados in the first semi-final match of the regional Super 50. We'll be right back. Join Caribbean Passport as we touch down for Trinidad and Tobago's Carnival with fantastic costumes, soca music and a few iconic characters all in the mix. We also look ahead at what's happening in sunny Barbados. All this and more coming up next on this station. Barbados, renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. 
the Caribbean island, quite popular as a vacation hotspot, is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics, the island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture. We can't wait to welcome you. Sail with us through our ocean blues, where there's a blessed land that's waiting for you. Shh, look, look listen, listen, feel, feel, realize your dream escape that's magically surreal. The best kept secret, a place you'll never forget, where adventure beckons with every gentle footstep. From lush mountain green to warm volcanic sand, submerged in splendor, our 32 enchanting islands. A kaleidoscope of experiences. No need to look anymore. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Caribbean you're looking for. Two sixty-four. That's how many runs Kent Cricket Club will need to beat regional Super 50 defending champions Barbados Pride in the first semi-final match that's underway in Antigua. Pride were in the driving seat from the get-go when they won the toss and opted to bat first. They were 106 for one with opening batsman Omar Phillips hitting a half century that gave the Caribbean side a solid start. Phillips scored 62 from 70 balls with 10 fours, adding 93 with Bathwick for the first wicket. He paired in the 22nd over when he missed a sweep that's off spinner Adam Riley and was out LBW. But it was Captain Craig Brathwaite who took command of the innings as he finished unbeaten on 112 from 138 balls. Brathwaite's turn included eight fours and two sixes as he put on a 144-run partnership with Roston Chase, who perished on a well-played 81 off 73 deliveries. Shamar Springer remained not out without scoring. Still in cricket, spinners Jumel Warakan and Rakeem Cornwall combined to bowl West Indies A to a stunning innings and 17 runs victory and an unbeaten 2-0 series lead over England Lions in the second test on Tuesday. Left-arm spinner Warakan bagged 4 for 69 from 27.2 overs to end with match figures of 12 for 103, making him a show-in for the Player of the Match award of spinner Cornwall supported with 4 for 88 from 38 overs as the Lions were bowled out for 260 in their second innings about half hour before the scheduled close on the third day of the match at Sabina Park. Several of the Lions batsmen got starts without carrying on. Liam Livingstone led the way with 48. Paul Coughlin supported with 47. Jack Leach made 29. Mason Green got 25. Nick Gubbins had in 22. Alex Davies scored 21. And their captain Keaton Jennings contributed 20. The result followed a two-wicket victory for the host in the first test, which ended last Sunday at the Trelawney Multipurpose Complex in Jamaica. All-rounder Andre Russell has dismissed claims about his lack of commitment to West Indies cricket and has again reiterated his desire to represent the Caribbean side in the limited overs format. The 29-year-old was one of four Windies players, the others being Darren Bravo, Kiran Pollard and Sunil Narayan, who were criticised after opting out of selection for the ICC World Cup qualifiers in Zimbabwe that start next month. But Russell said he had explained to cricket West Indies officials that having just spent a year away from the game, Serving an anti-doping whereabouts ban, it was important he first worked his way into match readiness. Russell, one of the most sought-after players in the international T20 circuit, will turn out for Islamabad United in the PSL, which bowls off Thursday. He will also feature for Kolkata Knight Riders in the Indian Premier League start in April and praise the franchise's input in his return to competitive cricket. Russell has scored 985 runs and taken 64 wickets in 51 one-day internationals and also played 42 T20 internationals. 
We switch sport now and turn our attention to football. United Kingdom-based striker Naki Wells has ruled himself out of Bermuda's two international friendly matches in the Caribbean next month, citing family reasons. Bermuda, nicknamed the Gumby Warriors, will play Antigua and Barbuda on March 21st before facing Barbados on March 25th. Wells has not played for his country since scoring twice in a World Cup qualifier at home against the Bahamas almost three years ago. The 27-year-old who played for Burnley in the English Premier League, captained Bermuda in that 3-0 victory. Wells signed for Burnley from promoted Huddersfield Town on transfer deadline day in August, making his long-awaited debut in a 3-0 defeat at home to Tottenham Hotspur in December. Barbados came from behind to beat Bermuda 3-2 at the National Stadium in October in their first meeting in nine years. Bermuda is coached by Kyle Lightburn, who has been in charge of an interim basis since Andre Bascom stepped down in August 2017 after five years. Lightburn previously coached Bermuda from 2005 to 2007 and also coaches the Bermuda under-20s. Double Olympic gold medalist Elaine Thompson and Olympic gold hurdlist Omar McLeod will lead a 40-man contingent to the Commonwealth Games in England next month. TVJ's Keon Raynar has the details. World 110-meter hurdles champion who sped to 7.41 seconds to take gold in Portland two years ago heads the 14-member men's team, which also include top quarter miler Javon Francis and the 2015 World Outdoor Shot Put Bronze medalist Odin Richards. The rest of the men's squad reads Kimari Roach, Stephen Gale, Kemoy Campbell, Ronald Levy, Demar Forbes, Clive Pullen, Andre Clark, Jermaine Gale, Peter Matthews, Rasheen McDonald, and Everton Clark, who is the leading Jamaican over 60 meters this year with 6.54 seconds. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. As you can see, I posted some great times on the circuit this season. I've done a new PR, so I think I'm in good shape. Elaine Thompson, who won bronze in the 60 meters with 7.06 seconds at the 2016 edition, will lead the 60-member female team, which also include the likes of World Outdoor Mallory gold medalist Stephanie Ann McPherson and triple jumper Kimberly Williams. Ramona Burchell, Guyan Evans, Dominic Blake, Tovia Jenkins, Natoya Gould, Aisha Prout, Rochelle Burton, Jenny Ian Williams, Shanika Ricketts, Daniel Thomas Dodd, Tiffany James, Jenny Russell and Anastasia Leroy make up the female contingent. Things do really and that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Barbados. Renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean island, quite popular as a vacation hotspot, is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics, the island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture. We can't wait to welcome you. Again, the major developments of this day, Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown hints that a date for general election will be announced in coming days, saying that Wednesday's meeting of cabinet could be the last before the poll. 
and in sport, Kent Cricket Club trying to reach 264 runs to beat regional Super 50 defending champions Barbados Pride in the first semi-final match. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to carnanews.com. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and do have yourselves a good night. Thank you.